These are the top three things I learned from Virgil Abloh, who is one of the most beautiful, amazing, brilliant minds of our time. So, number one, the use of juxtaposition and irony in art was key to Virgil's process. If you notice everything from who Virgil was as a person down to the name of his brand, it's all, <laughs> it's all laden with irony and with juxtaposition. Look at the name Off-White. Off-White defining the space between black and white, not as gray, but as off-white. He's already tying your brain in a knot <laughs> and instantly saying, it's not this, it's not this, and it's not this, it's something else. And what I take from that is that using juxtaposition in art and kind of being playfully uh, toying with people in art through the use of irony is very powerful because it gets our minds to go like, wait, what? That's kind of the whole point of Virgil's quotations around stuff is the whole quote thing that we do is kind of like when we say like, oh yeah, the movie was great, you know? It's like, it implies that we're meaning the opposite. And so Virgil putting quotes around things would make us do a double take and question, is he meaning what he's saying with this or is he meaning the opposite? Or is he meaning something, a third thing that's completely different? So it, it makes you start to conceptualize something that might be normal in a new way. For example, look at his collab with Ikea. This blew my mind, changed my world instantly. Where Ikea is one of the last places I would ever want to go in general. It just feels like a warehouse full of cheap <laughs> furniture. And one of the first things he does is he takes the Ikea logo, which is this big, bold, yellow, kind of obnoxious font, and he puts quotation marks around it. So suddenly it's not Ikea, it's Ikea. And for me, that just encapsulated how I feel about Ikea. It's just like eyes rolling into the back of my head, like, oh my God, Ikea, like the worst place ever. <laughs> but suddenly it was like the quotes made Ikea self-aware of itself. It's like Ikea was like, yeah, we're Ikea. Like, you know <laughs> how obnoxious we are. And that made me like them. The fact that they became self-aware of their brand as Ikea made me like them suddenly just through the use of those ironic quotes. It flipped the meaning of Ikea entirely on its head and made it something that represented sort of a, a self-awareness that I think is just a really profound thing to be able to take something in my mind that I kind of despise and turn it into something that shifted my entire view of art. So there are many examples I could give of this irony juxtaposition theme, but one way that one of my mentors, Sam Willis, talks about this is you can create interest in art by creating cultural distance traveled in art. So, for example, part of the reason that artists like Lil Nas X are so interesting is he's crossing such wide cultural boundaries. He makes country music mixed with trap. That's like, how different can you get between trap and country music? And then he's a black man making country, already a major cultural juxtaposition. Then he's a gay black man making, it's like, you couldn't, he like triangulated the furthest cultures possible and brought them all into one thing. And that's why, that's part of why he's so interesting. And I think Virgil played with these ideas all the time in his own artwork. So that's the first key, juxtaposition and irony in art. 
Point number two is Virgil's domino effect, which is how he described failing forward. If you look at his first endeavors in the fashion world, like Pyrex Vision and Bin Trill, the idea is much less mature than when he eventually creates Off-White and the collections he does for Louis Vuitton. But the idea like starts by starting. And I think that's something that I'm still trying to unravel in Virgil's work is that even though he is so conceptually sound in his work, at the same time, he seems like he doesn't think at all when he creates, which is so profound because look at how many collections he made a year. He made like hundreds of collections a year and and did like 13 other things all at the same time. And so he he's like constantly in motion, constantly executing and being willing to put out what he would even call bad work. He even made fun of in one of his lectures the idea of Pyrex vision as being quite a, a tasteless idea as opposed to off-white. He was like, can you imagine what it would be like if I was standing up here presenting to you guys about my brand Pyrex vision? Like it wouldn't have a lot of taste as opposed to, you know, now that I'm presenting off-white, which is a much more refined idea. So the idea being like, be willing to start, be willing to put out bad work and through that process of failing forward, the good work starts to emerge as the ideas start to refine. That's point number two. It's really just taking action, being willing to fail in order to succeed, which is probably the hardest, the hardest point to grasp, but very profound. Point number three is the 3% rule. The 3% rule is something that's really profound to me because it comes from this ethos of Marcel Duchamp when he created the fountain, which was this art piece, which was essentially just a urinal with his signature on it that he titled the fountain. And this whole idea comes from taking cultural perceptions and flipping them on their head as to what actually is art and what is okay and what is not okay to do in the art world. And I think Virgil really exemplified this early on with Pyrex Vision, where he would buy Ralph Lauren tees and screen print Pyrex Vision 23 on it. And uh, he would just take already made materials, add his 3% change to it, and present it as original innovative art. And a lot of people don't like this, but I think if we get real with ourselves, that's kind of what most art is. It's like a 3% innovation of what came before us. For example, if you look at, you know, hip hop, what came before hip hop, we have like funk and disco, and then we have soul and we have bebop and uh, doo-wop and goes back to jazz and swing and all the way back to people just doing percussion in Africa. And it's all just like iterations, small iterations on top of the thing that came before until we have something that is profoundly different. So I, I like that. I, I think like, look at, look at Andy Warhol someone who would take iconic photos of celebrities and screen print them with different colors, just change the color essentially and sell it as art or take boxes and uh, canned soup and put his own labels on them and, and make them in his own materials and sell that as art. Basically this idea overall of having an idea and changing it slightly like the Nike sneakers that he would, uh, Virgil would put cool laces on. It's like being okay with kind of shamelessly taking the ideas that worked before us and just adding a small spin to them and 
moving the culture forward that way, I think is quite powerful because then you're also leveraging the cultural impact of the thing that you're altering 3%. You know, it wouldn't have hit as hard if Virgil had taken a sneaker no one had ever heard of and put like cool orange laces zigzagging across it. But he took the most iconic shoe of all time, the Nike sneaker, and did that with it. And then it's like, oh, you're kind of like beautifully defacing this Mona Lisa of sneakers. And, and like, it's ballsy. And it's like, are you allowed to do that? It begs that question. And that's the kind of conversational spark that I think gets people's attention in the art world and becomes controversial in the art world. And that's what Virgil was a master of, is <laughs> controversy and adding 3% to ideas and failing forward until he became a master and mastering the use of juxtaposition and irony in his work. So, yeah, in summary, using juxtaposition and irony makes people think, creates a collision between cultures, is very effective in art. Being willing to become a master by iterating ideas over and over, learning through failing, learning through moving forward. Point number two, point number three, taking pre-existing ideas, altering them 3% and presenting them to the world. It's cool to also acknowledge where the original idea is coming from, but you'd be surprised how many artists that we revere actually just basically stole other artists' ideas and added their spin to it. And we think of them as some of the greatest of all time. Looking at you, Led Zeppelin. Looking at you, Picasso. Looking at... <laughs> You're looking at you, Andy Warhol, you know? Like, we revere these artists, but they're, they're not creating all original ideas by any means. So, thank you all for listening. I hope this was helpful. Um, thank you to Virgil Abloh for being one of the greatest artistic inspirations of my life and rest in peace and um, may we continue to carry your legacy forward in uh, a way that honors what you left behind and all of the wisdom and knowledge that you left with us so thank you all i hope this is helpful to you and i'll see you in the next one peace